Good evening, everyone. It's another Tuesday night, and you are tuning into Craft Beer Blab, the discussion all about craft beer as well as possibly some other beverages. Uh, but tonight we'll keep it keep it on beer. Um, we got kind of a, a I don't want to say a full topic list because that's hardly the case. Um, but I do have a couple of hop topics that I want to talk about before we go into. Um, I'm going to do a pour and review of New Belgium's Citradelic. Um, it's a tangerine IPA. And so uh, we'll see how, how that goes. You know, um, fruit in beer. Again, it's a big thing right now. Um, all the breweries are doing it. Uh, Dan K just mentioned that uh, he's about to dive into a Ballast Point Grapefruit Sculpin, which is a beer that we've had here in the past. Oh, he tweeting. Nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining in. Um, so, and what other, uh, we've done a couple of other fruit beers. Um, so we've done the Grapefruit Sculpin. Uh, comes to my mind most. But, so Tangerine IPA. Um, Interesting. I'll give it a shot and see how it tastes. Um, this will be my first time drinking this. This is from New Belgium, you know, one of the bigger craft breweries out there. Um, but while we were just talking about uh, Ballast Point there, I just heard today that Ballast Point is actually... Okay, so we know that Ballast Point was purchased by Constellation Brands, which... Um, owns a number of other beer companies. Uh, I believe it's Corona. Um, a lot of the uh, beers that come out of uh, Mexico are owned by Constellation Brands. Um, and Ballast Point was purchased uh, by Bal or yeah, Ballast Point was purchased by Constellation Brands um, recently. I think it was in December, maybe it was January. And of course, we had a, a, a discussion about that, and we can continue that discussion too. Um, but one of, I guess, one of the benefits of that buyout, because I think it was like, I want to say, and I could be wrong because my memory doesn't always serve me correctly. Uh, I think it was like in the billions of dollars. And so with that influx of money allows them to expand. And so what they're doing is that they're going to build a $48 million brewery in Virginia. This was just announced today. Um, let's see, Tommy. Hey, Tommy K, how's it going? Good, thanks. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah, you're coming in good. Fantastic. Hey, I heard the same thing. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, it's it's kind of exciting. It Again, it, you know, whether or not you like big beer companies or not, uh, it is interesting that Ballast Point is building a huge facility in Virginia. Um, and that kind of follows along with like Oscar, Brew Oscar Blues um, and New Belgium also have uh, breweries in the East Coast um, in the South there um, to kind of be able to sell and distribute from both sides of the United States. I think it's, it's great. No, absolutely. Um, it'll the it'll give them the push they need here on the east coast right for sure and i think it'll help with uh with distribution and being able to have uh fresher beer closer you know something that's brewed closer to where it's going to end up rather than shipping it all the way across the country um and you know shipping things happen and things get stuck and all that kind of stuff so i think it's 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 good it's interesting um to me, it's interesting because of the amount of money that is going into it. I mean, I don't know how much it costs to build a brewery, but obviously they're they're going to do it right. $48 million is a huge amount of money to do it with. So it's probably going to be an awesome facility with some amazing tap room going on and gift shop and all that kind of stuff. So it's cool stuff. Yeah, no, it's uh, that's that's huge. I mean, uh, because I mean, freshness is key when it comes to uh, a beer like that, and um, it's you know, it's it's just that much less time the uh, consumer has to uh, purchase it and have a great quality beer. Right, exactly. I do want to give a shout out to my buddy Jonah. 
he is unable to join us tonight. He had some family thing going on. Um, wasn't too clear, but uh, hopefully he and his family are doing fine. Uh, you know, good thoughts going out to him, uh, but he's unable to be here tonight. So I'm running it solo. So I got you back there, Captain. Right on. Awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and crack open this uh, Citradelic New Belgium beer. Again, it's a tangerine IPA. So I'm kind of interested. You know, I get a little nervous about fruit-flavored beers, um, but I do love a good IPA. So IPAs always catch my eye. Oh, it's got great color to it from here. Yeah, it's got a nice color. It's lighter than some other IPAs, but still not like a light, uh, you know, yellow beer. Yeah, it looks extremely crisp. I mean, it looks refreshing Great, yeah. as hell. You can see all the bubbles sticking to the side there. It's got an interesting nose yeah. on it. I mean, you definitely get the, the hop characters in it, but What's you it? also do get some of that tangerine, orangey smell to it. What's the taste? It does Citrusy? have a citrus to it. You know, I, I think I like it because it doesn't have a whole lot of tangerine. The tangerine flavor kind of comes yeah. in at the very, very end. Oh, and Dan K says okay. his grapefruit sculpin is good. Nice. I'm glad you enjoy that. That, that Again, of the uh, sculpins that I've tasted, I think grapefruit was my favorite. Yeah, I was just about to say that I, I, I'm, I'm kind of into the sculpins and the grapefruit is yeah, at, the, yeah. at the top. So this is good. How's the it's second sip? Really nice. You know, it is kind of a um, a lighter body. It's not a, a, a heavy beer. It is refreshing. It's it's like it, for an IPA, it's almost like a, a lawnmower beer. You know, one of those beers that you could grab after mowing the lawn. And, and I don't want to say yeah. slam it, but you could almost slam it. Really? Almost. Or during, yeah, in case says or during. So it's 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 that much of a light body to it that that you could, I don't know what the ABV is on it. Uh, let's see, six percent. So yeah, it's not a huge beer. It's um it's almost oh. sessionable, I guess. At the same time, yeah. though, I'm sure you got to yeah. watch it at six. It's just at that cutoff point where you know if, if you do if you do drink it too fast and have too many of them you'll be snackered and uh not doing well <laughs> your lawn tractor has a cup holder i can only assume it's for I was just reading yeah, that. It <laughs> yeah. you know what they expect you to drink water i mean that's ridiculous stay <clears throat> has uh, have you have you tasted anything else by that uh, by that uh, by new belgium Yep. New Belgium, I do like, um, they have a staple, where is it, I have a secondary beer on back up here, Fat Tire. Oh, Fat Tire, yeah, of course. That's always good. Yeah. Um, they're, you ever had their Oktoberfest? Um, you know, I don't think I've had their Oktoberfest. Fucking brilliant. Brilliant. I mean, it's a great beer, great tasting. It's not your typical Oktoberfest. I think it's refreshing. I love it. Big fan. Nice. I'll have to give that a try because, yeah. You know, some, some Oktoberfest beers I don't care for. There are a couple that I really like. Um, I think Summit makes one that I enjoy. But even then, I don't I don't like them all the time. Hey, Jojo Keys, nice to see you on here. Jojo. Oh, awesome. awesome. So I just uh, was talking about Citradelic, the New Belgium new Tangerine IPA. The whole uh, New Belgium family is just phenomenal. It's a good, good, good buy. Yeah, won't break the bank, uh, but at the same token, it's it's a great beer and uh, no less quality than uh, any other. Right. Uh, well, I think that's you know they 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 are probably one of the largest and still craft beer brands out there. Uh, but Dan K, I like a good Oktoberfest. I'll give it a go too. My favorite is Hacker Shore. I haven't heard of that one. Oh. I've never had that one from New Belgium. Yeah. Um, so New Belgium, it, I think because they are so big, it gives them 
kind of the opportunity to be able to price themselves um, lower than a lot of the other craft beer brands, which is right. really nice. Then the other thing I like, their, you know, their, um, their mix packs, what do they call them? Their folly packs. And it changes throughout the year. So, you know, you'll get a, a 12 pack or a piece that's a folly that has, you know, four, four, four of certain, certain ones. And it allows you to try their different beers. And even if there's one that's not necessarily one that you would always get, at least you don't have like a whole six pack or, you know, a whole 12 pack of something that you're not going to drink. So it's a nice way to, to taste their different offerings. You know, I've had the, I think I did this past uh, Christmas time uh, during a Tuesday night. I had a, um, I had a, a sampler pack and it came with, and I think I was on when I did it. I think it came with like four, four or five different, like different threes or four right. sections. Um, I, think I remember that. Uh, Fat Tire was in one. <laughs> yeah, Fat Tire was in there. Their Christmas, whatever. I don't know their Christmas deal. They had a, mm -hmm. a coffee one was in there, right. and then another like uh, decorative beer was in there. But you know, all of them, even the coffee. I'm not really into that that really dark shit. But uh, like, it was good. I, I drink uh, probably you know a handful of them before I had to find something refreshing like that. Right. Right. Yeah. You know the 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 dark beers, the stouts, the coffee stouts, and, and stuff like that. They they do take a little bit of, um, I don't want to say getting used to, but uh, you, you kind of have to have the the mood for it, I guess. Because, you know, the roastiness and sometimes it's, it's just, it's hard. Breakfast beers, yeah, yeah they, they are kind of breakfast beers. And that's why, um, what is it, Founders has their breakfast out, um, especially when you, when you put coffee in them. Uh, it's like, hey, you know, but then not a lot of us can, can enjoy beer with breakfast every morning so it's not a not an everyday occurrence so let's see here so we talked about ballast point ah here's a good topic so i threw out this uh this link on twitter earlier today um but it was an article i came across about how elitism is kind of doing this backlash thing where it's actually giving the big brands, you know, Budweiser and Coors and stuff, kind of ammunition to kind of fight back against craft beers. And hopefully I try not to be too elitist when it comes. I mean, you know, I'll enjoy a Coors Light sometimes. Um, you know, you always have friends that, that that's all they drink. And so, you know, you want to be social and, and enjoy a beer with people. Um, and I try not to put people down for what they choose to drink. Everyone's got different flavors and different tastes. Um, but let me throw this link up there, too. So Beer Advocate. Oh, it didn't. There it is. Beer Advocate uh, put up this article that's talking about how elitism is alienating the macro beer fans. And I can totally see that, you know, if. If you're not a craft beer drinker and then all you hear are put downs um, from snobs talking about the type of beer that you drink, well, then that's not going to encourage you to try those beers, right? So um, hopefully, and, you know, if if I do come across as elitist, I, I do not intend to be, and maybe I should, should look at how I talk about um, other beers. Um, but the big issue is hopefully instead of craft beer brands always putting down the larger beer companies and talking about, you know, how crappy they are, how, you know, they're fizzy yellow piss water or whatever. Um, instead of talking about that, just talk about how good your beer is. So, you know, if I'm, if I'm Brewer X and I make, you know, I make a super IPA instead of coming out and tweeting or talking about or putting out videos about, oh, how Budweiser sucks and they, you know, they're, they're a huge company and, you know, they, they're not in it for you and all this kind of stuff. And then also, oh, their, their stuff tastes like crap and they can't even have a good beer. Those people that do enjoy Budweiser, 
they're not going to be encouraged to drink what I'm drinking or what I'm putting out if that's all I do. So um, I'm not sure what everyone else kind of thinks about that. You know, it, it does kind of, to me, it, I don't want to say it comes across, but there is a fine line between maybe a healthy criticism of something versus just being elitist and um, snobby, just downright snobby um, about it. And, you know, also coming from a cycling background also, it's very easy to kind of fall into this elitist uh, mode. A lot of uh, cyclists, road cyclists especially, come across as very elitist and very uh, uh, snobby. I mean, I used to hear it all the time at the shop, uh, you know, we don't shop at your shop because your workers are all snobby. They all look down upon everyone. And so that, that could very easily be translated over to the craft beer culture and world. Um, hopefully, like I said, hopefully, uh, at least with uh, us on Craft Beer Blab, we don't fall into that. You know, um, we did have our, our 40 ounce party uh, back in, I think it was December. Um, we should do another one, uh, or we could do a, a, um, a macro beer taste test. That would probably be a fun show. Again, Tangerine IPA from New Belgium, Citradelic. It's, you know, it is a very refreshing, easy drinking beer. Oh, here we go. Ale brewed with tangerine, orange peel, and orange. Okay, nice. Yeah, you remember the 40 ounce show. Yeah, I remember it too. Jonah didn't do too well uh, with his. I think uh, he didn't. Uh, didn't enjoy the after effects of, of his. I know that I had a uh, Mickey's, I can't remember what, what he had. Um, was it Colt 45? It might've been Colt 45 because I think he was talking about uh, maybe bringing some orange juice or tang and making some, some brass monkey. Anyway, let's see what else is going on in the craft beer world. So we got Ballast Point building a $48 million brewery in Virginia. Might have been Blomberg. Yeah, Dan B. Not sure where he's at. Haven't seen him on in a long time. Uh, da, 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 da. So Ballast Point, they're going to be building, I guess, in Roanoke, Virginia. And according to this article on Brewbound, they're actually the third brewery from San Diego to choose Virginia as a place to expand to. So Stone Brewing and Green Flash are also, so in Richmond and Virginia Beach, um, as well as Deschutes plans to build a $95 million facility in Roanoke. So a lot of West Coast companies, brands, I think Deschutes is in Oregon, um, the, re the rest of those were in Southern California, are planning on opening breweries on the East Coast there in, uh, in Virginia, which is amazing. I think it's great. It's, uh, you know, unfortunately, being in the Midwest, in Minnesota, we kind of had to stick with Minnesota beers, I mean, obviously we get, uh, I don't want to say imports, but uh, we get stuff distributed like New Belgium and, and all of those beers I think we get here in Minnesota. Um, but it would be nice if some of these breweries were to build an expansion facility in our neck of the woods. Um, you know, maybe we can we can see if Oscar Blues is willing to, to open up a, uh, a northern brewery or a northern facility it would be nice to have something like them in, in our backyard uh, in addition oscar blues would be awesome because they they do a lot for the uh, mountain biking and cycling community so it would be interesting to see how they tackle the mountain bike community here in the midwest let's see what else we got going on in more local news 
uh, Summit Brewing in Minneapolis, or actually in St. Paul, Minnesota, just announced a new chief, chief sales officer. Again, this is off of Brewbound. It's a uh, craft beer news uh, website. So they hired, uh, who is this? Mike Bomonti, who was former president of J.J. Taylor, who is one of the largest uh, distributors of all beers in uh, Minnesota. So that's kind of interesting that, that he's going to chief sales officer at some um, Kind of cool there. Da, 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 da. Let's see what else is going on according to Brewbound. And here's the link to Brewbound uh, in case anybody else wants to uh, find things on there. They have, uh, besides, I mean, it's a great site for news on beer, craft beer, uh, but also they have. Um, job postings and job listings uh, for places. Let's see here. Indeed expands distribution in Minnesota. Indeed is a Minnesota brewing company. Um, and they, I think they are strictly distributed in Minnesota. And so it looks like they're expanding. Um, right in North Central Minnesota. So it sounds like uh, the Iron Range there, I guess. Um, North Central. Uh, da, 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 da. So good things coming from them. Indeed has a number of, of excellent beers. Uh, I think uh, Let It Ride is one. Um, they have a great uh, session IPA. They also have a, a cool tap house up in the cities. So if you ever get a chance to, uh, if you ever get a chance to tour breweries up in the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul area actually in Minneapolis um, then you'll want to check out I think indeed is is one of the better tap rooms that they have up there very nice if anybody has any questions please feel free to um, go ahead and type them in or if anyone wants to grab a seat um, please Go ahead and come on, and we can uh, discuss some of these other things going on. Here's another news item. Stone Brewing, they're another Southern California brewery. They've had a couple of, of really good beers, but they are um, they have a number of tap rooms around their state in California. And so I saw this, uh, I think this was a couple of days ago. Kathy M., nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining in. Um, so Stone Brewing is building a pilot brewery and tasting room in Napa, which is a little bit more north. San Diego Tap Room is nice. Nice. I haven't been there. I've had a, uh, a friend of mine go there. Um, Stone Brewing makes a excellent gluten-free beer or gluten-reduced beer, I guess you could you have to call it. Um, what is it called? Stone Delicious. It actually uses a... a newer variety of hop called a lemon drop and so it gives it a very citrusy lemony flavor to it um i went in december good food and good beer yeah you know they they're known for having both good food and good beer in their tap rooms um when i do get out to uh southern california especially san diego i definitely want to stop by there and and uh check it out so this one in Napa, it's uh, they're calling it a pilot brewery and tasting room. And so I think, and I could be wrong, I think what, what usually brewers breweries mean by pilot brewing is that they, they use smaller batches and they'll try out different sample recipes um, to see how they work, how they taste, you know, um, test it out in this smaller environment. And then uh, if it works well, then they can make other, they can either expand it or they can just do it in a small, small thing. Dogfish Head does that a lot. Yeah, they do. They do. They'll, they, um, and in fact, uh, I can't remember the, the name of the guy that, that runs Dogfish Head, um, but he, he also does a lot of home brewing himself. So he experiments uh, both in uh, their pilot brewing system and just as a home brewer uh, to 
you know, test out different recipes, test out different things. I think it's it's great for brewers to do that. Um, in this Brewbound article on Stone, it says that it's a 10-barrel uh, brew system used to produce unique small batch creations and will complement the company's core beer lineup. Yeah, so um, it's, a, it's a great way for them to experiment and try different things. Um, and have to do theme park beer drinker. Nice to see you on here. Thanks for joining in. How are things down in Orlando? Hopefully you're doing great. Rocking and rolling. Nice. So I just finished up my Citradelic New Belgium Tangerine IPA. Again, really good beer. Um, don't want to say it's a session IPA, but it is later than some other IPAs. It's a six ABV. Um, it does. You do get a little bit of um, tangerine flavoring way at the back. So when you go in and and drink it, I mean, there's there's some tangerine citrus aroma to it. That you definitely get hops up front, but then when you taste it. Um, it's kind of like at the very end, you get this kind of a dream to Lakefront Brewery here in Milwaukee holds a competition for its employees. Homebrewers who work there can bring their own recipe. And if it wins, it could be put into production by the brewery and named after them. Think park beer. Nice. I'm drinking a Funky Buddha hop gun. Nice. Awesome. Yeah, I don't think we get Funky Buddha up here in Minnesota. So that's that's another brand that I definitely want to try eventually. Dan K on that um on that home brewers uh, thing, uh, that's awesome that they that they get recipes in from their their employees. Um, but kind of on that same topic, just recently, I want to say in, in the last month or so. There was a homebrew competition here in Rochester, Minnesota, in which case the winner of that actually gets to have their, and I think it's at Deschutes. Nope, they're Florida and Georgia now. Nice, yeah. Funky Buddha, only in Florida and Georgia now. That's too bad. Well, I mean, it's good for, uh, for people in Florida and Georgia to be able to enjoy those beers. It's bad for us in Minnesota, Wisconsin. Always willing to trade. Nice. Awesome. You know, we should uh, go on the Facebook group for um, for Craft Beer Blab. And we had something set up because I'm definitely open, open to trading. Um, let me throw the link up here. Facebook groups, Craft Beer Blab. Yeah, so I started this uh, Facebook group for the show, but also for uh, to kind of try to help facilitate trades. And so I know both Jonah and myself, we've traded amongst ourselves a couple of times. And I know that he's really interested in, in trying beers from, from different parts of the country, um, as well as other people on that group. So if you go ahead, I trade with folks from the Northeast. Yeah. See, and it's a great way to get beer that you normally wouldn't be able to get. So, like, if I wanted to get some Funky Buddha from you, I could uh, trade some Surly or um, something else up here that, that only we can get. Um, you know, I think Surly is probably the, at least from Minnesota, probably the most sought-after um, beers from up here. Uh, possibly also um, Toppling Goliath. Uh, they have a, a couple of beers that, that people like to trade with. So if you go ahead and get on that group, um, then we can, uh, we can start uh, seeing about uh, getting trades between all these, all these people and get that going. Um, so what I was talking about, okay, the um, homebrew competition. Uh, so one of our, our liquor stores here in town uh, had a homebrew competition, and the winner of that competition was able to take that recipe, and I believe it's through Deschutes Brewing. I could be wrong, 
Um, it's been a while since I read the article, so I, I could be wrong. But the shoots is actually going to produce the beer. Um, I don't know if it's just going to be a small limited run or if it's going to be kind of put into their actual production. Um, I do remember that they changed the name, something about a penguin, and they're, they're putting a penguin on the label. I don't know exactly why, maybe because Minnesota is cold. I don't know, but it'll be interesting to see that. Maybe I can look that up real fast here. Just, uh, Uh, trying to see if I can find nope, not coming up. So let's see. What else? What else? What else could I search under? I guess. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure I can find the article. I know it, it wasn't necessarily in a newspaper, but. It was very interesting. So one of the local brewers here will be getting their beer made by, I believe it's Deschutes. I could be wrong, but they'll be getting it made there. Um, what are we got here going on? Okay. So everybody else, what, uh, what are you drinking tonight? And what do you enjoy about it? I know theme park beer drinker here, Funky Buddha Hop Gun. Tom K is back in the house. So I'm going to go ahead and open my Fat Tire. Fat Tire is an awesome amber ale. Just a good classic. Also about to open a Terrapin Walking Dead Blood Orange IP. I've heard of that one. Of course, I've heard of it both because of the uh, Walking Dead tie-in, as well as just the fact that uh, Terrapin makes some pretty good beers. Yeah, Dan K, the grapefruit really, they got that balance between the grapefruit and the hops and the malt backbone. Yeah, it's just enough. It gives it a, a, an interesting flavor, um, and it's like they really play against each other. Tommy K's calling in. Sorry about that. I had sorry about that. I had some type of some type of conference call that I wasn't conference call that I was that I didn't that I supposed to be part of. Supposed to be part of. Part of because I got part of because I got. Huh? That was weird. Oh well, that's how it goes. I mean, it's all technology, right? Correct. But, uh, Correct. Things happen. Uh, oh, he's tweeting, drinking Blue Moon Belgium Table Pills. Nice. How are you enjoying that? Hopefully it's good. Dan Case says, I had the pineapple in my hand and put it back for the grapefruit. You know, to me, pineapple, it was worth it. I think to me, the pineapple sculpin was still better than the regular sculpin, but not as good as the grapefruit. My only issue with Ballast Point and their sculpin lines is that they are pricey i mean they you know i think they're like 16 dollars a six pack which is isn't the most expensive but it's not cheap either right I mean, right yeah what and what's a what, what was that six pack did you say that yet um which one the one the citrus or whatever the uh Ooh. the citradelic yeah it was a new Belgium. It's it. It was actually a one of their mixed um, mixed. Was it twenty four pack or twelve pack? I think it was a twelve pack. So it had, I think it had four of these, and then four of the fat tires, and four 
of uh, something else and four Rangers. So, the drinker says he can't get into the fruit IPA craze. You know, I I hear that because to me, I can't get too into it because it seems like it's just the fat. I mean, everybody's coming out with a fruit beer, and especially a fruit IPA. Um, it when things start becoming a fad, it's like, oh, you know, just another fruit IPA or like a year or two ago when it was just the bomb IPAs where everything had to be as hoppy as possible. And, oh, it's got, you know, super hops, super hops. Uh, it's like, well, you know, I enjoy a good IPA all the time. But when all it's it's about is about making your face kind of go right. because it's so puckered, uh, then it it takes away the fun of trying them. Um, but you know, the pineapple and the, uh, what was it? The pineapple and the grapefruit sculpins definitely are worth a try again, little on the pricey side. So it's not like every weekend you're going to go and grab a six pack of, of grapefruit sculpin or pineapple sculpin, but, uh, every once in a while they're, they're good. They're good beers. Dan, how much is a six pack of, of that? Of, I forget. Of the- of the Sculpin series, they're usually like around, well, at least here in Minnesota, they're like $16 a six pack. Oh. So, I mean, it's not, it's not outrageous, but it's still a lot more than a lot of people want to spend. Where, where, where are they brewed? Ballast Point, they're, they're still out of San Diego, California. Right now though. Yeah. Yeah. So. Uh, eventually, when they do get that that Virginia brewery built, then I'm sure it'll kind of be split. Yeah. And so I don't know where, uh, as far as here in the Midwest and Minnesota, where we would be getting ours from. But Theme Park Beer Drinker says, the Terrapin Blood Orange is not an orange drink, just small nodes to balance it out. Yeah, see, that's that's I think that's how you do um, a fruit-flavored beer correctly, is you you choose the fruit to kind of balance out other things in the beer and you do it just enough so that it, it, you know, maybe it has little notes of it or it brings out certain flavors. Excuse me. Again, if it's, if all you're tasting is orange, well then it's like, well, I could just, you know, I can get some orange juice and pour it in my beer. (laughs) And, uh, you know, we could do a brass monkey like, uh, um, like we used to do. So to me, that's, that's not so much fun, but when it's, when it's done right, when it's done just with the balance in there, then it's, uh, it's good stuff. Dan Kay, when Budweiser releases their new branding, that should be the only time it's acceptable to say you hate America, <laughs> but we shouldn't hate Budweiser. I mean, it, it's what people drink, right? It's, uh, some people enjoy I drink it. 40. 40 is a Budweiser. It, yeah, I think you did that on camera too. I mean that, yep. you know, and that kind of goes back to to that article I had brought up. Maybe you missed it earlier, but I still have the link in there. Um, how elitism is kind of alienating a lot of uh, beer drinkers from trying like craft beers because it's it's always, you know, we put down Budweiser and we put down Coors and we put down uh, all the the fizzy yellow drinks and people get pissed off. I mean, I would get pissed off if, if what I always drank was being so put down all the time, it would be like, why am I going to drink your beer when all you do is put down my beer? So I can totally see it. The me, uh, the me park beer just shot out. Uh, they fired 35 K people after 35,000 people after, uh, the sellout screwed them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I totally agree. Yeah. No, I yeah, mean, that's, that's not good. No. Which sellout was that? Was that um, Budweiser when I they believe, got sold to? Um, I yeah. 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 That was that was just shitty. No. Yeah. Well, you know, anytime people losing jobs, I mean, especially after a sellout, and you know, I mean, obviously in business, mergers and that kind of things happen, um, but. 35,000 people. I mean, there's, that's a whole city. I mean, you know, right, right, right. That's that, nuts. That, that's nuts. That's not fair. And again, it goes back to, and I, you know, I hate to be like, Oh, well, this is why beer is bad, but 
because it comes down to the bottom line of profits, uh, you know, what's one of the easiest ways to cut costs so that your, your profit margin seems like it's higher is you cut out labor. So you cut out 35,000 people. Uh, that's a huge amount of money that then shows up more in the profit area than in payouts. Miller too. And you know, Dan, Dan makes a, a strong, valid point. You know, Budweiser used to be uh, at least an American company. Um, and he's, he's right there. Um, it, mm -hmm. it was the all American company um, at one point in time. I mean, it was, that was what we looked for at Christmas. We looked for those Clydesdales pulling that sled, you know, and that was, that's part of, you know, that was part of, I know me growing up, I always saw that at Christmas and right. my dad drank Budweiser growing up in PBR. And uh, it, it, it was, it, it's kind of, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for here, but it, it's, it's almost a little, you know, heartbreaking to see uh, that happen, you know, and, but, you know, I get it on a business sense because I see it day to day. Right. I see that. I see that how, how to drive a business um, and make money at it. And, but I mean, that's it, another thing that they're a board, you know what I mean? So right. I don't think, right. I think it was about the, the, the millions and millions and millions as opposed to being the, you know, the, the company that's, you know, family owned for 90 years. Right. Which Budweiser right. was not. And I don't know. It's, it's it was just sad. I don't know about you. No, well, I no, well, I agree that it is that it, is, it was the it was all American company, all American company. and it just kind of just kind of dropped. I mean, dropped. I mean, once they sold out, and I think before the uh, InBev purchase, they were owned by a, a South African company, and you could kind of you could see that it was just going that way, um, and then. You know, to kind of add insult to injury, this whole America branding, uh, at least for people that know, then it's kind of, it's almost insulting in that, okay, well, you're obviously not really an American brand and you're just going to be, okay, well, we're going to brand ourselves as America. And all it is, is to make more money. It's not, you know, they want to connect with Americans and be all patriotic, but if, if you're company is a Belgian company, then how, how is that really being patriotic? Right. And you know, uh, the me just said out loud chat there. He's like, uh, he's like, I'll be honest. I used to work for Anheuser-Busch at SeaWorld and he's saying that they got out when they sucked coming. I mean, which was, which was smart. Yeah. Right. But, uh, yeah, you know, it, Getting back to the craft beer aspect of the show, you know, I saw a lot of um, of microbrews um, when I was up in Traverse City, Michigan. Um, and Ooh. from what two of the nine microbrews that I went to within like a downtown radius of Traverse City, those that don't know Traverse City, Michigan, uh, we're not talking about a big city here. Uh, oh. We're, you know, small town USA up in northern Michigan on uh, on Lake Michigan. And they were saying that they had the most uh, microbrews per capita in the city. Nine. Really? Wow. And I That's... was, I was, I was barely able to walk. Right. I, I think I put a few of them um, <laughs> while I was in them. I think after my second uh, brewery, though, and probably my sixth beer after right. the second brewery. Um, yeah, I was kind of, I was like, yeah, I'm done tweeting. I'm just going to drink. Right. But. Amazing beers up there in northern Michigan. Amazing microbrews. I've seen them pop up all over the damn place. And uh, in Pennsylvania alone, too, on the East Coast here, um, I, I've just seen the explosion of microbrews. Um, and, you know, some great tasting brews. I had uh, Surly um, the last time I was home, and I was totally impressed because I know you talk a lot about Surly and you drink a lot of Surly, so I was... I was really, really, uh, I was hoping I wasn't going to be too devastated when I didn't like it, but I absolutely loved it. I loved it. I thought it was a brilliant beer. I thought it was great tasting. Amazing. No, yeah. Yeah, I, I do think, you know, they they do kind of sometimes come across as overrated because they're, they're kind of, you know, everybody talks about them and all that. But for the most part, I think I haven't had too many of their beers 
well, I haven't had any that I absolutely didn't like. And I've only had a couple where I was like, yeah, you know, it's okay. It's uh, maybe not something I would drink a lot, but, uh, you know, it's a good, uh, they make pretty solid beers. Um, and they're not afraid to try different stuff. So, I mean, I think that's great. Too. And at the same time, they don't, they don't break the pocketbook. Right. Yeah. I mean, they, they have some that are really pricey, but for the most part, they try to keep right. them. Um, and, you know, what's interesting, too, is that they do price their beers different. You know, different beers are different prices. So to me, that kind of tells me that they're kind of being honest with their pricing in that if one beer actually costs more to produce for whatever reason, whether it's because it, it stays in the tank for longer and it takes more labor, or if it's because of the ingredients, they're going to charge you more for that beer, but they're not going to go across the board and say, you know what, all our beers are, are $20 for a four pack. Right. No, you know, some of them are that pricey, but then you can also get a four pack, you know, for, um, for 16 ounce cans for, I think, nine dollars at some places sometimes even less um and so you know you have this range and that uh to me that comes across as being more honest um with the consumer yeah absolutely what uh, what other uh what other um microbrews do you have in your area um well there's a lot of so i guess kind of like um what you were talking about with travis city is that there's a lot of very local beer. So like here in Rochester, we have three breweries that they don't distribute outside of Rochester. So they just, um, there's Kinney Creek, there's um, Life's Too Short Brewing, and there's, what is the third one? I can't think of the name of it now. Um, but they're all very small, small batches. They, uh, they're not interested necessarily in distributing out outside of town. So you have those... Okay breweries um and then as far as the bigger breweries like up in the cities uh, you have like indeed is a really good one uh they make a number of different beers although i think they're only distributed in minnesota and even then we just read about something that that they just expanded to some other towns in minnesota so they're not even everywhere in minnesota yet uh, well so surly summit uh but they're more of a regional brewery so they they distribute outside the state. Have you tapped into the Three Floyds market up there yet? No, we haven't. We can get Have it if we go to Wisconsin, but I haven't been over across the border in a while, so I haven't been able to get it. Have you had any? I haven't. I'm I excited for you to try it. Yeah, I definitely. You know, I did try. So uh, I do homebrew myself. So I. I made a recipe that was based off of Three Floyd's um, zombie dust. Oh my God! Seriously? Yeah, that was that would that, be worth my drive to come taste it. <laughs> that was awesome. It was uh, it was probably one of the best beers that that we brewed. And you know, it, basically, they give you the recipe and they they break it all down for you and they give you the hop breakdown and everything. And so you brew that up, and as long as you follow the directions it should pretty much come out the same as what three Floyd's puts out. So I was really happy with that beer. That tasted amazing. I believe that they are growing their own hops. They have a hop farm. Mm -hmm. um, there's several in the no uh, Northern Indiana, Southern Michigan area that are doing that. And I go to three Floyd's. Uh, I don't know. I'm not home more than a week out of the month. So, um, Usually when I go home, though, we eat food, too. It's a restaurant as well. So, I mean, they have amazing food. But um, their their hop farm is sick. Right. Oh, I think that's, that's great. You know, I think we'll probably see a lot more of these local breweries. Oh, Dan K is a big Three Floyds fan there, too. You yeah, must Dan be close. You have to be close in that area, then, because I don't think it expands past Michigan, I don't know if it does it break into Illinois and Wisconsin. It goes into Wisconsin. Is that what you said? Gunner? It goes into Wisconsin. I think that's, that's how Dan gets his theme park beer. Yeah. Hearing you talk about it. I want to try it. Yeah. Alpha King is, I, I would agree. Alpha King's my top five. 
Um, uh, Zombie Dust um, is definitely uh, number one. Um, Alpha King, though, I have that in my fridge right now, and I'm sure my wife's drinking it as we speak. <laughs> Stop drinking my beer. Wait till I get home. <laughs> <laughs> You know what's bad is that you know we we always have all these great beers in our fridge and our beer fridge, uh -huh. but then like every time I'm out east, like I have to bring home three cases of uh, Yingling. So right. <laughs> talking about Big Brother, you know what I mean? I mean getting, <laughs> you know, but Yingling, I don't think Yingling is sold. Have they? They're still owned. No, yeah, they're still there. I think they're still considered a craft, craft. You know, in the true sense, a craft beer. Yeah. Um, you know, so they they're definitely. A good beer, yeah. Theme park beer drinker. That's our tailgate beer. Nice. Yeah. He's oldest too. Yeah, that's true. They they are America's oldest um brewery. Oh, Not it's craft brewery, but I think they're the oldest brewery. Oh yeah, it is. It's America's oldest brewery. I've been to actually. You know what? Next Tuesday, I come back into Pennsylvania. I might actually. They have a late tour. I might actually take the late tour, and hopefully, it lasts till uh, nine or so. Nice. And I'll I'll chime in and. Do a walkthrough on mute. Yeah, that would be <laughs> awesome. It's sweet. We go to the brewery in Tampa all the time. It's next to Bush Run. Oh, nice. Very nice. You know, that's the first place I had Yingling was in Florida on my honeymoon. That's awesome. Tampa, Tampa also has, um, what is it? Hialeah, um Cigar City. They make an excellent, uh, excellent. Tampa does have Cigar City. Not these cigars, but they have Cigar City. Yeah. Yeah, Cigar City is top notch, and they were just bought out by uh, Oscar Blues. Or not bought out by Oscar Blues. The company that Oscar Blues has. Well, Yingling is really branching out on the East Coast. <laughs> I think Yingling's pretty big on the East Coast. They just haven't gotten yeah, too far. We're only pretty much up and down the East Coast is the only part. It basically, Ohio River Valley, anywhere east or I'm sorry, west of, I think, um, I want to say, I don't even think you can get in Georgia. I think it stems along the coast. Starts in PA, was founded in PA, and then goes straight down up and then straight down, like uh, Carolinas, uh, straight into Florida. Wow. Oh, theme park beer drinker says you can get it in some parts of Georgia. Yeah, and Jersey. Oh, you can. Good. And it says, uh, uh, looks like, um, oh, we tweeting. Uh, my dad lives in Boston and used to bring him, or used to bring him uh, six packs from Jersey. Nice. Nice. Awesome. No, yeah. See, that's why we want to get the the beer trade thing going on the uh, Facebook group, so that uh, we can get some some money in here. And you know, brother, I, I I'm just one of those guys that have never joined Facebook. Oh, so no. I'm not going to be part of your group. I wish I could be. I mean, I hope, hope the group's on Twitter too. Link it to Twitter somehow. <laughs> right. I'll have to see about that. See how how to how to do it. Because yeah, I'm not actually a a big fan of yeah, Dan I, dude, I still have a MySpace account, Dan. No shit. <laughs> True story. I haven't seen it in fucking years. My wife told me that the other day, though. Right. <laughs> I'm sure there's a page of mine somewhere on there. I think uh, I had tried to delete it and then changed my email address in in some time and then couldn't get back into it. So there's something probably somewhere that still has my face on it. Um, but yeah, Facebook. I was on there for a while and then I. I kind of stopped because it just got too I don't know what what your reasons for not going on there is but my reason to stop was that it just got too ridiculous that you know you know supposedly you're friends with 300 different people and they're all chiming in on stuff and it's like well I don't know you from a hole in the wall and you other three quarters of the people wouldn't talk to me in real life anyway, you know, I'll see right. them they're out and about or whatever, and they don't talk to me. And it's like, why am I going to be fake on Facebook with people I don't even care for? Um, so I kind of just stopped. And so, you know, I just use the, uh, the, my, the group just as a way to connect with other craft beer 
people from from Blab here, um, and hopefully we get the uh, the trades going. But yeah, I'll see if I can uh, somehow facilitate some some sort of connection with the uh, with Twitter. We'll get you involved somehow, Tommy. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, oh, he tweeting <laughs> says I'm uh, I'm south of Jersey, about 25 miles from Philly. So I'm in the heart of Yingling country, dude. You're straight up in the heart of Yingling country, bro. I mean, that's you're you're where it's at right there. I mean, live, die, drink Yingling. Nice. I mean, I've been down to Philly. It's Yingling everywhere. Excellent, nice. On well, theme park beer, I Twitter trade too. So you'll have to <laughs> let us know how to do the Twitter trades. I mean, my biggest fear with with trades is, and I'm not, you know, obviously I'm not afraid that that Tommy's not going to send something back or anyone that's on here now, but uh, with Twitter being, again, so many people on there that if I throw out, oh, I want to trade with someone, I got, uh, you know, this, uh, I don't know, surly axe man, uh, and I send it out to someone, my fear is that I never hear from them again and, and <laughs> lose out on some beer. <laughs> you know, I guess it could be worse. It's not like super expensive, so it's not like uh, sending diamonds to somebody in uh, in South Africa or something and hoping to get get your money back. But uh, <laughs> still, it could be disappointing. Yeah, no, totally, absolutely, and I and I think that's a you know on the honor system type of thing, and I think it's a great people because you know we have, we we do have a like a, a solid group of guys that you know follow you, follow Jonah, um, ever again follow me when I say something random and obnoxious off the chain. But um, I, I think the guys that we do, the, like our core guys, you know, I think that's, um, I think we're good there. Right, right, right. Well, and I think that's that's the trick too, is, is as long as you recognize the, the person somehow, then that's a good way to, to do it. If somebody just random comes up and says, hey, I'll trade you, you know, this for that. And, you know, they're wanting some ultra rare beer from you. Uh, maybe it'd be good to, to be a little cautious. Right. And you're kind of getting back to the Facebook thing. I think the only reason why I haven't joined Facebook at this point in time, before it was just, I just didn't want to be part of social media. And that was before I've been on Blab for 172 days and on Twitter right. since it freaking started and, you know, periscoping since day one before they right. were off the air for the week when Twitter bought them out. Um, <laughs> I think I'm, now it's just pride. That's it. And that's all I really want to touch on there. <laughs> I just refuse. Well, that's like uh, Jonah's trying to get me on Snapchat, and I mean, I, no. I think I actually have an account, but I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna put it on my phone again. And you know, he, if he hears this on the replay, he'll probably get mad at me. But you know, I, I'm I'm not gonna go go into it and and, and do it again just because uh, I don't need I don't need another social media platform to get into. I got enough. Right. And, you know, I'm not even on Instagram. Like, I don't have an Instagram account. I don't have a Snapchat account. I don't have a blah, blah, blah account. Like, I have a Twitter account. I started with Twitter. That was it. The only part right. of social media I had. And then my favorite radio host was on. And he was like, hey, there's this new app on my phone. And I just found it. And it's like live streaming. It's like, But nobody's on it. And I'm live streaming right now. So I download the app, Periscope, mm -hmm. put it on my phone. And I'm like, this is a fucking greatest thing ever and then a week like three days later it's gone and right. i'm like what the hell just happened and right. then a week later periscope or uh twitter buys them and is back up right and i'm like oh my god and then next thing you know i mean now i'm on blab and um yeah i don't know what the other one is i didn't do in here lately because blab is kind of peeing me off but that's a side note Right. Well, it's got it, it's got issues. I mean, it's got issues. You can snap your tweets forward to Instagram, live stream on Facebook, and forward to Periscope. Right. <laughs> <laughs> all while using Bob. Yeah. <laughs> Do it all at one time. Do, 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 do. Get all the apps uh, going. You gotta love that. Yeah. No. It, it's. It's too much, yeah. I'm on, I'm on Instagram, you know. I love doing that, take a picture of my beer and, and post it up there and all that kind of stuff and take pictures while I'm out riding. But uh, I don't use it too much more than that. If audio only was your thing, then there's always Anchor. Nice, I hadn't yeah, heard of that. I think I, I, I had heard that there's a couple of audio only things, but uh, never tried you know, them because out. I, 
I've realized the fact that, you know, I definitely have a face for uh, radio. I mean, uh, yeah, for, so. for radio. <laughs> yeah. Well, what was it? There was that, that comedian a long time ago that, that just put the bag on his head. The, um, I can't remember what he called himself, but the, uh, you know, you could do that. Then you could live yeah. stream. <laughs> it's like Twitter for audio. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah. Post two minutes. Oh, nice well, there you go. Yeah, that, that works. Two minutes. I that's cool. Yeah, that's kind of like well, what was that other one? There's Vine, and I don't, I, I, my kids show me Vines all the time, and they're like, "Oh, this is so funny! Oh, this is so funny!" But uh, you know, I can't see the point of of sitting there and making a seven second video or whatever it is. I think it's ten seconds or seven seconds. Right. Uh, you know, if I'm going to sit there and I'm going to open the app and try to think of what I'm going to do and 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 do something it's probably going to be you know it, it'll probably take me at least seven minutes just to get the app open and, and working correctly so i don't i don't know whatever i sound yeah. like you know? <laughs> oh well what a uh, what an evening for craft beer i apologize for having to be gone for so long but um what a oh. great conversation we had in the meanwhile yeah well I, I do appreciate it thanks for for jumping in there with me uh, I do thank you, everyone else here, Theme Park Beer Drinker, Dan K, uh, Ohi Tweetin. I do appreciate you guys joining in. Um, That's good. Yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week. I think the plan is next week, besides having a, a, a beer or two, is also possibly another whiskey tasting. I'll see if I can get another bottle of whiskey and, and try some whiskey on, on here. We'll see how oh, I, have a nice, I have a nice bottle at home that I haven't cracked yet uh, that I got from a customer. So and I don't even know what it is, to tell you the truth. Oh. So I'm, I, I'll, uh, I'll crack mine next Tuesday. Nice. Awesome. The answer is no craft beer is not overrated. Yeah, that's true. You know what? I think, uh, well, it can be overrated when you get snobs involved with it. <laughs> right. I totally agree. <laughs> Time for some Sweetwater IPA. Ooh, that sounds good too. Mm. I think Sweetwater. Um, I'm pretty sure I've had it. I can't. I should look at Sweetwater. Good. I had Sweetwater. Yeah, it sounds it sounds super familiar. So I'm pretty sure I've had it. Uh, thanks, Ohi Tweetin. Thanks, Dan K. Thanks, Theme Park Beer Drinker. Thanks, Tommy. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording. Uh, again, good thoughts going out to Jonah. Hopefully, everything's good with you and your family there, Jonah. Have a great one.